Hi yeah, you right loves, my name is Crudy Dench, Yorkshire's hairiest woman, and welcome to Yorkshire Tea. Yorkshire Tea is a brand new recap and review of the recently premiered series of RuPaul's Drag Race UK, or for short, Rupert Yuck. Being a scandalous UK drag queen myself and having wasted three years of my life on a film and TV production degree, I think that I am fully qualified to give you my thoughts, opinions, views, takes on this format here on our very own British Isles. So let's dive straight in, why don't we? The episode opens in the workroom and it looks gorgeous. Gorgeous! You've got the British flag in the background, they've clearly spent some money on it. It is not reflective of the UK drag scene at all. We're getting ready in backs of pubs and disabled toilets if we're lucky. This is luxury! I bet they didn't even get homophobic slurs and kebabs thrown at them as they waltz in there. They can still only afford polystyrene heads, but you know, we'll look past that. And so the parade of catchphrases begins, starting with bag of chips. Queen of the bad sausage. She wastes no time in telling us that she's a loud, stupid whore. Ooh. Next up we have Blue Hydrangea looking stunning in a blue couture outfit. I absolutely love this. She's very endearing from the off and she's from No Known. No Known. Not Scotland. No Known. No Known. Next up we have Davina De Campo, age 35. She is the old queen. <laughs> She makes sure she tells the audience exactly who she is by giving us her full IMDB and Spotlight profile. So there, bitch. Next up we have Crystal. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's body dysmorphia. Get out, that's not a British accent, get out. What are you doing here, get out. This is ours, you can't have it. After that we have Something Wong who coughs her lungs out. <coughs> Following them we have Cheryl Hole. Fringe! And then we have Gothy Kendall, who's pretty. Pretty fucking awful. After that, we have another London queen in leopard print, vinegar strokes. Total she does a fantastic impression of Michelle Visage. If Michelle Visage was Gilbert Godfrey, the parrot from Aladdin. I can't help you, don't ask me no questions. <laughs> Boy, Jafar's gonna be happy to see you. Penultimately, we have Scaredy Cat, who is the new queen on the scene. She spares no time in making sure that every other queen hates her. How long have you been doing it? I've been doing it for 11 months. Oh. Oh. Finally, we have my hometown gal from Liverpool, the Vivienne, looking like a beautiful pack of ready salted crisps. And so the time comes, the gay overlord RuPaul enters the workroom for the first time with a horrible cockney accent which does not go away for the rest of the episode, no it doesn't. <laughs> RuPaul reveals that he personally fingered each one of the queens, which, to be honest, is the only way some of them could have got on it, let's face it. She done already done had her finger in the anus. In this part, we also find out the grand prize is... She'll be whisked off to Hollywood to star in her very own digital series. Disappointing! It's a YouTube series. They get a YouTube series. They they fly over to World of Wonder and, and get a YouTube series. It was worth spending all that money on those new dresses, gals. We then get introduced to the Brit crew. Woo, Brit crew. Who come in with faces like slap asses. They 100% don't want to be there. And with a creepy laugh from RuPaul, we move on to the mini challenge. This mini challenge, RuPaul says, is done in the tradition of Anne Boleyn and Mary, Queen of Scots. Pretty sure they didn't have cameras then, Ru. Just, just saying. <coughs> but in all seriousness, I loved this challenge. This is the perfect balance of 
getting to do a photo shoot, um, showing off their modelling prowess, but also showing off a little bit of their personality and their humour. This is honestly some of the funniest stuff we've seen from Drag Race in ages. RuPaul comes out with some great lines like, Such a rich cultural exchange for me here. And, You're watching the BBC. There's also some hilariously directed bits, such as the Brit crew fake laughing at the Sher impression. And though I did love this bit, it is a little bit cringy at times. With the Vivienne, I was like, please stop, we'll save some for Snatch Game. Stop. The winner of the mini challenge is Scaredy Cat, with a joke I, to be honest, didn't get first time round. I was like, she's saying she shit herself. Is it funny? Is incontinence funny to you? Show you my colostomy bag, you bitch. But then I realised she was shitting her own head and that, you know, that's funny humour, I guess. <coughs> then RuPaul reveals the maxi challenge for the week. A great challenge where the queens have to replicate a look from Queen Elizabeth II. Wait! <gasps> but there's a twist. Do they have to do it on roller skates? Do they have swinging axes flying at them? Blind me with pepper spray? You need to serve a second look. Yeah, a second look. They have to do a second second look. Do they have to make the second look? No, no. They just, just have to put on a new look. It's a, ch a challenge, I guess. Although I do like the concept of the second look, being able to express your hometown. I don't know whether this is a little bit too much overkill or just filling time. Suitcases are grabbed, bags are brought in, and the fight for workspace begins. They all start getting undressed. Uh, Scaredy Cat comments on Crystal being all hair. Fucking hell, wait until she goes to actually see a fucking drag show and sees a bearded queen. Then she'll really shit herself. And Vinegar gets her tits out for the lads. It feels like a ball bag. <laughs> we get a couple of confessionals here. Some are good, some are less good. Bagger. Boy bagger. Bagger. Boy bagger. She's looking. She's looking for ideas. She's looking for ideas. They're not coming. The conversation turns to plastic surgery. Gothy feels a little bit uncomfortable with this. She says that her teeth are something that she's always got in the back of her head. I mean, they must be in the back of her head because there's none in the front, is there? <laughs> Gothy is upset, but this storyline is immediately a drop. The girls are all getting ready. Scaredy Cat reveals that she has never been to a drag show ever. And her first drag show is gonna be the lip sync for your life. I want my fucking money back. The Vivian shows us how she creepily stretches her skin. Can you feel my face now though, how tight it is. Oh my God. And the other girls have a conversation about their hometowns. And it's at this point you know it's Drag Race UK because every single one shits on their hometown. And there is nothing more British than shitting on where you're from. Well done. You've done us proud. It's main stage time and the runway is decked out with all the classic British accoutrements right down to the IKEA paper lanterns that you find in every single student left in the UK. RuPaul struts down the runway in what I've got to say is a slightly disappointing outfit for the first episode of Drag Race UK. I was expecting some sort of big royal ball gown, maybe just a little bit of red, white and blue, but no, she just goes for a simple mint green dress. Looks like she's going out with the girls on a Saturday night down to Pop World. She's gonna have a partini, maybe finger someone in the blues, who, who knows. Our judges are Michelle Visage doing a terrible Cockney accent. Hello, governor. Make it <laughs> stop. Make, Make it stop. Make it Cheerio. stop. <laughs> a fairly timid Alan Carr who comes into his own later in the episode. Oh, I wrote. And queer baiting expert Andrew Garfield. I'm so happy. I feel like a competition winner. And the prize is a day in gay heaven. I just got to lay back and just watch and enjoy. So thank you for that. I enjoyed watching you lay back. Thank you. Goodness. <laughs> Goodness me. I found it sexy. I found it 
um, hot, I found it. <laughs> You're right, Alan. I, I did. I mean, Liz, I'm here to be honest. What follows is the product catalog of every single Smithy's wig under the sun. But seriously, some of these looks were absolutely fabulous. My personal highlights, something Wong, both the bull look, very bold, very brash, very drag, and the stamp look, the queen stamp look, very camp, very kitsch, very British drag. I really did like Scaredy Cat's hometown look. It was very different from everything else that was being presented on stage. It was very complex, lots of detail. I really like Blue Hydrangea's queen look. Again, lots of attention to detail, very unique concept. Pennies up the bodice, very, very well done. And the Vivian's transformation speaks for itself, really. So we get some comments from the judges here. Michelle's British accent makes a reappearance. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> Clearly in the bottom three, we have Cheryl Hole, Vinegar Strokes, and Gothy Kendall. The queens go backstage and untuck with their Robinson's fruit shoots whilst the judges deliberate. Best judging read here goes to Alan Carr. When she came out in that first outfit as the tiger, she looks like an estate agent that's gone to Regent's Park Zoo and said, can you face paint me face for 50p? And then she's gone back into work and gone, what do you think, girls? <laughs> 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 you know. Alan Carr here really bringing that British humour and energy to the show to RuPaul's apparent bemusement. And so after Cheryl Hall's important STD advice... Up your bum, no babies! Yeah. We head back to the main stage and find out the winner is the Vivian with two very distinct looks. I think that's completely fair, despite the dreaded flat shoe. I wear flats all the time, I don't really care, I just don't so think it's that much of an issue, but you know. And what does she win? Does she win makeup, dresses, wigs? No! A Rue Peter badge! K Jesus Christ! But with a winner, we also have two in the bottom. The two in the bottom, Vinegar Strokes and Gothy Kendall. The first lip sync for your life here on Drag Race UK is Dua Lipa's New Rules, a fantastic lip sync song, lots that can be done with it, and it's interesting to see how both queens tackle it. Gothic Kendall is giving us very kid in a class assembly, no eye contact vibes. She doesn't know quite what to do with her hands as well, she's sort of like an elderly Spanish woman batting away flies. Vinegar, on the other hand, is clearly well seasoned. We have a very strong lip sync, we have constant eye contact with the judges, we have dance moves, we have movements, we have shaking of tits, we even have a couple of wig reveals, but to be honest I would have preferred three just to, just to properly sync it up. And so with skirts falling down and glitter everywhere, the lip sync is done and Gothy leaves. Gothy leaves us by going, Miss Kendall, Miss Kendall, and, and then references that she's the UK's pork chop in a mirror message. And I'm like, come on, show us some personality now, if, if nothing else, please. Don't rely on other references. Ugh. And so we're down to nine queens and with one horrible Cockney accent to go. How you doing, governor? That is episode one of RuPaul's Drag Race UK done. Overall, I was very impressed. It was in keeping with the American version in terms of editing and direction, but it did have a distinct British flavour to it. It's also some of the funniest drag race we have seen in a good long while, and I think that's a testament to the British drag scene itself. The cast itself is also kind of diverse, um, which is nice to see, um, but it would be good to see more diversity if the series does get picked up for a couple more seasons. That's it, that's your lot, that's Yorkshire Tea. I do hope you enjoyed sipping with me in these few minutes that we had together. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here today, do follow me online at Crudy Dench, that's Crudy with an I, like Judy but far more crude. And follow House of Dench for more videos like this, as well as our beautiful events up and down the UK. If you'd like to see more of this, do let me know what you enjoyed in the comments section below. And if you hated it, piss off! 
Uh, no, um, I'll, I'll stop doing it if everybody hates it, to be honest, because this took far more effort than it was, it was really worth. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Bye-bye, loves. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye-bye. 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 Bye, loves. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye. It's good to see you. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, I fucking hate this. Fuck off.